welcome back to all on law this is o b g y n quick o b g y n and today we're going to talk about what are the conditions what are the requirements okay to fulfill what you call cervical ripening cervical ripening okay so what are the conditions you require for this so remember it should have what you call a clear indication for the procedure okay and the presentation should be the vertex very important vertex presentation and the bishop score you know bishop score very well we're gonna upload a different video on that bishop score should be what you call less than four okay score less than four what's the bishop score you know it's a what you call a quantitative method for predicting successful uh, induction of labor it involves uh, dilatation of cervical dilatation, cervical position, cervical effacement, head station, and cervical consistency. So these all together, we make a score, okay? Uh, depending on that, we uh, know the outcome of the pregnancy, okay? So labor. So Bishop score less than four, remember, non-reactive, well, sorry, reactive, non-stress test, very important. It should be reactive, Okay, NST should be reactive to this. NST is non-stress test. Okay, and there should not be no evidence of CPD. It's a fellow pelvic disproportion. There is no evidence of CPD. Okay, remember. Right, and what you call, there should not be what you call placenta previa. Placenta previa. So these are the important conditions that should be fulfilled before a cervical ripening, okay? So we know we can cervical ripen with the prostaglandins, there's some pharmacological techniques, mechanical techniques, okay? So different techniques are there to ripen the cervix, okay? Uh, so thank you so much for watching this video, take care.